Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. Today, we're discussing the Tudor Heritage Black Bay Steel, a 2017 Basel World debut. You can see this steel bezel, steel case, steel rivet style bracelet, Tudor Black Bay, with date, and purchase it on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos, and please click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen at any time during this video to see our full sales listing for this watch, with additional accessories included in the sale, high resolution images for your desktop, and naturally complete pricing details for this Tudor Black Bay steel. The watch on my wrist may represent the most contemporary of the Black Bays, and perhaps the best value among them. This is a timepiece with a full steel bezel, minimally calibrated, a watch with a full bracelet in evocative rivet style, albeit with modern construction, and a very versatile size at 41 millimeters with a three-day power reserve COSC certified in-house caliber. You get a lot for your money with this Tudor Black Bay steel. You also get a more contemporary look than the somewhat self-consciously nostalgic Black Bay norm. So this is a watch that I can endorse in every respect. It's easy to wear on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist. As you can see, it has a large but manageable 50 millimeter lug-to-lug -lug measurement and because Tudor recognized you don't want to watch projecting too far beyond its lug-to-lug -lug if it's going to fit on a smaller wrist, it features pivoted end links that allow the bracelet to pull straight down so there's no flare like you'll find on a solid end link Rolex. The timepiece is 41 millimeters across the round of the case, not including its rather substantial crown assembly and extended stem tube. Moreover, the watch is thick and this is a Tudor signature in the modern era. Something has to give and it's the slim profile of your convention. Rolex watch. So sister brand Tudor makes do with a watch that's only one millimeter larger than a Submariner, but this timepiece 14.8 millimeters thick compared to about 12.6 for a Sub. Nevertheless, it wears well. I've often said for a smaller male wrist, a uh, wrist between about 14 centimeters circumference and 16 and a half, you want to have a 50 millimeter lug to lug span or less, and that's exactly what you have here. The watch wears well. It also feels substantial. Just a generation ago, steel Rolex Submariner G. GMT, Explorer timepieces, Daytonas, did not feel as solid and substantial as this Tudor Black Bay Steel. Everything about a contemporary Tudor feels more expensive than it is. It feels like the luxury product it is, yes, but it also feels capable of punching above its weight and comparing to more expensive Omega and Breitling products. Now you'll note the three-link design is familiar. It's an oyster-style bracelet. In 2017, we got this unique rivet-esque bracelet designed to evoke older Rolex pieces. It is not truly assembled with rivets, though the look is evocative. Happily, it's also more substantial than an old rivet bracelet. As you can see on the underside, smart sculpting, opening up channels to ventilate the wrist on a hot day, as well as evacuation of the passages between the individual links to avoid pinching skin or pulling hair. Now the clamshell closure is surprisingly impressive. Clamshells are usually a more budget oriented alternative to triggers, but on Rolex and Tudor watches they feel uncompromised. First, everything is substantial. The clasp is substantial. The shell, the swing arms, very, very robust. It doesn't feel thin stamped or in any way the budget option. And you'll even note the level of detail with ceramic retaining pins used to ensure that over time the tolerances remain just as crisp. And the same kind of detailing you get on a Rolex clasp is present and correct here. You'll note that there's a recess within the clasp. You see this channel? Also, when seen from overhead, you see how there's a little bit of a reduction of the flanks so that when the clasp is locked, the clamshell sits entirely flush when viewed from every angle. Very impressive stuff. And you'll note, of course, micrometric adjustment points that you can take advantage of with your strap tool. Sizing, though it does appear to be a rivet bracelet, is done with conventional sizing screws, so no pins and sleeves here despite the attractive price point. Let's give ourselves a bit more aperture, lighten up the view, improve the focus, and get a little closer. Okay, now the case. All of high polish with the exception of the satin finished lug hoods and bezel. The watch certainly gets attention. It looks larger than it is, and due to the thickness and the sheer heft, it also feels considerably larger than it is. Nevertheless, it does have a few vintage elements that are charming and nostalgic without being cloyingly so. As you can see, the polished bevel along the case, yes, mechanically applied, but it's evocative of a grace and a hand-finished charm long disappeared from the Rolex catalog, happily still alive, at least aesthetically, in the Tudor catalog. Now, the bezel is the best part of this watch next to the movement. Here's why I say that. 
Yes, you can get a ceramic bezel, and yes, you can get an anodized bezel. In the last 10 years of Tudor production, we have seen both. But this is both more durable than anodizing in that it's harder to scratch steel, also less pronounced when it does scratch, and at the same time, it doesn't risk the fractures, the chips, and the outright shattering that sometimes limits the durability of ceramic. Ceramic is binary, kind of like a light bulb. It's either intact or broken with nothing really in between. So with steel, you can take a nick, a knock, a scratch, a scuff, and a dent without shattering, chipping, or otherwise compromising your bezel such that it might come off. So that's the advantage of steel. It's a cleaner look that's harder to see scratched and damaged than anodizing, and it's also tougher in an absolute sense than ceramic. Unidirectional rotating action, you you can see how you line up the vintage style red triangle with luminescent pearl against the minute hand. Now you've got a zero to 60 minute timer counting up to 60. You can use this for timing just about anything. And I've often said in my videos, I prefer a dive bezel to a chronograph anytime I have to time something less than an hour, which is almost every application of a chronograph I've ever encountered. You mostly time minutes, not hours. Now the timepiece does feature a satisfying ratchet. I would actually say it's better than a comparable Rolex. It feels a bit more mechanical, a bit more substantial. Rolex moving in that Blancpain 50 fathoms direction these days, going towards refinement. This one feels a little bit chunkier. The detents are more crisp, more pronounced. I like it. You'll also see there's a wonderful loom shot of this watch at the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. The dial is evocative, but not quite the same degree that you would see on other Tudor Heritage Black Bays. As you'll note, First and foremost, the presence of a large date window with a black on white high contrast. This is an easy watch to live with every day because of the presence of the date. While purists might decry it, they have plenty of other options in the Black Bay family. You also note the hour hand, that's a little bit of a shout out to the old snowflake dials of the late 60s to mid 70s and of course the watch featuring not one but two separate Tudor logos as you can see the later shield logo and the original rose logo on the crown now there's a vintage inspired red printing of the date and you'll note if you can see it it is a evocative meters first where you see 200 rather than 660 leading the line, and it is a certified chronometer. Unlike any vintage Tudor Submariner, this watch does feature Tudor's in-house caliber MT5612. And you'll note, in case you had any doubts, the Tudor tells you as much on the case back. Automatic winding with a 70 hour power reserve, 28,800 vibrations per hour. As you saw, water resistant thanks to the screw down crown and screwed in case back to 200 meters. Silicon hairspring for anti magnetism, COSC certified Swiss chronometer. It does feature both a free sprung balance and a full balance bridge for shock resistance. So, very tough. And of course, it features the obligatory hacking seconds as this is a chronometer. It makes sense to be able to set it precisely to the second with that glorious snowflake style diamond seconds hand and of course it features a quick set for rapidly cycling the date. This is a watch that offers the full package for less than half the price of the cheapest new Rolex Submariner. You can have this pre-owned. It's an even better deal. See it in high style and make it yours on our website. And we are back with the Tudor Heritage Black Bay Steel. As you can see, an easy watch to see in the dark. It doesn't exactly crib Rolex's chromolite aesthetic as it uses a more traditional green luminescence to distinguish the Tudor brand. You can see how easy it is to line up the pearl of the bezel with the minute's hand for easy nighttime timekeeping. This is a watch that offers a lot of character and utility. You can see it by the light of day with full accessories on our website.